and I'm here with my dear friend, the composer, Michael Alec Rose. We've just finished three days working on the new piece he has written, inspired by this place and the instrument that I've been playing it on. So I would like to ask him some questions uh, about the piece and to get it into context. Uh, so Michael, why did you write this piece? Well, Peter, you asked me to, <laughs> and I could not say no. Um, this is an adventure, and the Met is the first place where music that I've written for particular instruments uh, has been premiered and recorded. And it is your program, it is your idea, it is your concept, this whole amazing uh, journey around the world in how many instruments? 80, I like the mm. Jules Verne idea. But in this case, the instrument by Jakob Steiner uh, from 1660, I did not hear it. I, I didn't have any notion of what it sounded like, but I know you. And I know that I saw the instrument in the museum's catalog and I knew that this was an instrument that I was going to love. I just knew it. And so I tried to open up the sound as much as possible and to do a, as much resonant and, and, and celebratory sonorities on the viola, which for decades has been truly a very important instrument for me. So that's really interesting. You had to imagine the sound before yeah. you experienced it. But I know you, and I know what you have done with so many instruments that I've heard you play for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And this is the first viola piece I've ever composed for you. And you write lots of viola music. I write, I, I have lots of viola music. But for you, it was something special and it was very important to me. So what happened to the piece for you when you, it, and you met the viola? The first time I heard you pick it up and play it, it was, it surpassed any expectations. And Bradley, the curator who has made all of this possible, uh, the fact that we were in her office, in her room, made it even more special to me that, that your collaboration with this museum and with Bradley, I was in a sacred space mm -hmm. and the viola filled it up. And having read a little bit about Steiner's life and biography, that actually was very important to me too as I was composing. This, this troubled man with his very troubled biography. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that that darkness, which of course is characteristic of the viola in any case, was something that I could illuminate and actually make bright in a way that most people don't understand the viola, but I knew that you could play it that way. So what we did was we spent actually two afternoons um, uh, working in great detail effectively allowing the, violas, the viola to teach us the piece all over again. I think it's safe to say that not a single note of the piece remained entirely the same <laughs> after oh the viola had been met it, had it? And once again, 18 years we've known each mm. other, this has been a process that has been at the center, not only of my compositional life, but of my emotional life. Mm. The, the fluidity, the natural evolution of my music, thanks to you. Nothing is engraved in either pencil or ink, certainly not in stone. It is a work in progress, even after, here's the score. I mean, I, I do all my work in pencil precisely because I know I'm going to need to erase a lot of stuff. And, and that is such a, a gift to me that, that you have given me a chance to make the music always capable of becoming better with your help. I think one of the things that we both believe in is the idea that there's no repetition in music. When you play a piece again, there's going to be another journey. Something else is going to happen with it. It's going, it has to be alive, and that means you don't travel down the same road again. But just to give you a tiny little illustration of the kind of things that happened, when you hear the piece and you hear the end of the piece, there's a sort of sunburst at the <laughs> end of the piece. Now, that sound, Michael had an idea of what he wanted, but I don't think either of us were ready for the kind of brilliance the instrument was going to get bring to it. And actually, we actually quite challenged by writing down on paper what it is the viola does. And that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's uncanny to know what you want, but not how to get there before you hear the instrument. Mm. As a composer, I knew that the last thing that was going to happen had to be, as you said, a sunburst. Mm with an ultimate radiance, which of course goes again, it goes against the grain of what uh, the viola is meant to sound like, certainly in orchestra music, mm -hmm. but to turn it into this luminous, radiant sound 
was something that I needed your help with. And I had to hear the instrument, and we made a lot of changes to that ending, thanks to you. And one more question, which is, um, can I ask what your feelings are about hearing it actually in this space of the museum, or in this wonderful space with this Tondi harpsichord that's behind it and everything? You know, I, I, it's hard to express what, what I'm feeling right now. I, I mean, I've loved this museum my whole life. Um, and to be in here in this beautiful place with these beautiful instruments, to feel part of that history now, it's more than a dream come true. I mean, it, it has to do with the sense of, 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 of destiny. Mm. It's like, with your help, with Bradley's help, I'm exactly where I, not only where I want to be, but where I have to be. And, and that feels really amazing. And with all humility, I know that this is something that was meant to happen because the collaborative energy is exactly what matters most. Yeah. Thank you. 